Okay, so hi everyone, uh, I'm Tommaso, and before I start with my talk about uh, speeding up your build times with a uh, simple mechanism, um, let me, yeah, uh, I'd like to know how many of you use cartridge? Okay, that's about half, I would say. How many of you use copper pots? Okay, so that's more. How many of you use both in the same project? Okay, okay, I see. And submodules, maybe? Submodules? Nobody uses sub. Okay, okay. Okay, a couple of people use submodules too. Okay. Cartridge with submodules. Okay. So, um, I'm going to um, use cartridge too. And uh, before I start talking about uh, the, the subject, I'm going to kick off my build, okay? So, cartridge, cartridge uh, build, no, bootstrap, or actually, bootstrap platform, iOS, okay? And I will talk while this runs. Platform, okay, here we go. Here we go. So, I'm here to talk uh, to you about a little uh, thing I made called Roam, which is a simple solution for uh, caching. So, the problem is as follows. You have a lot of frameworks, yeah? and each framework has a long build time. And we have quite a long list of frameworks, like this much. And if you're curious, that's about 26 uh, dependencies, more or less. Yeah. Uh, on top of that, you have more problems. So if you use Cartridge uh, and you're developing a framework that you want to use in your uh, main app, and you want to use a bleeding ledge ver version, for example, and maybe you're not the one developing the framework. Maybe there's a colleague or another team uh, remotely or something that is using, um, that is developing the framework, then you want to um, maybe use the leading edge version, right? And that could change, and it could change very quickly. And if you use cartridge, you know that um, the hash of the version of the framework that needs checking out is stored in the card file resolve, right? So potentially you have to update this every build that you make if you want to stay up to date with the latest changes. This adds to your app build time. So our build time from scratch is about 45 minutes if we just let it run. And this is um, using Swift 3, by the way. So um, not all frameworks are Swift, but most of them are. So it's quite uh, a um, long time, right? And uh, on top of that, if, say, you change your branch, and now you have to maybe fix a bug on uh, your app, and your, you need a different version of the framework, or of a bunch of frameworks that you're uh, developing with, what you have to do is, okay, now let's do it again. Check out the new versions, build, wait, so on and so forth. All right? And uh, on top of that, you cannot share these artifacts. So there is no way if you're like, working alone, or sorry, if you um, don't have some sort of sharing mechanism set up, Cartridge doesn't do it for you. So, and that's you know, why you build something many times to just take the artifact and share it with whoever needs it. So the obvious solution to this problem is caching, right? So build a cache and use a producer-consumer uh, flow, which means somebody makes the build of the framework at the hash that you need, and you get it pre-built, and that's it, right? So seems uh, pretty obvious. There are some existing solutions for this already. Uh, for example, um, there's a, a movie script called uh, Cartridge Cache, where you can download and upload your entire build folder. Right? 
And this can get very big. It can get, for example, for us, it's around 500 megabytes or so, including these things and uh, other things. Yeah? And the way it's stored is it, com it computes basically a hash of the entire build folder, right? It, up it uploads or downloads the entire hash. So if you change one key or if you change something in, uh, in the versions, uh, the cache is invalidated. And there you go, you have to re-download the entire thing, right? Uh, another way that you could potentially solve this problem is you could use, uh, you could attach releases, you could use, uh, sorry, you could attach binaries to GitHub releases, right? So, but GitHub, unfortunately, is not an option for everybody. If you use other systems like Bitbucket or uh, SourceForce or <coughs> others, then you cannot use these features, right? On top of it, this is just hypothetical, but you would have to tag every build that you make, not just the release, right? You have to attach the binary and so on and so forth. So, these are, this is just to set the, uh, the context, and what they made is obviously, as we presented, it's a solution that solves these pain points, at least for us. So, um, what they were what I'm presenting is called Row, is obviously a command line uh, utility, which has the following features. Uh, you can just cache what you need, which means that if you want to cache one framework, if you want to cache the entire build folder, you want to cache two frameworks, whatever, it's up to you. And the keys for the cache are computed from your card file resolve, which means that if you update your card file resolve manually or for through Cartage Bootstrap or, sorry, Cartage Update or whatever, right, then <clears throat> you can just read these keys and use them uh, uh, for caching. It also offers cache redundancy, so you can use it, uh, uh, you can use it with a local cache, like a local folder, or you can use Amazon S3, or you can use a combination of the two, which means, you know, you can have a cache in the cache, right? Um, on top of that, it has uh, even more features. So you can probe the caches to see if a key, in this case a framework, is uh, existing or it's missing, right? You can blacklist some keys, meaning that you always want to ignore, you don't care about uh, your config uh, uh, repository, for example. And you can selectively upload or download whatever you, as many frameworks as you want. And it keeps a per-platform cache, which means that you can use it uh, for uh, iOS, tvOS, macOS, or, or watchOS. And the cache, it caches not only frameworks, but it offers you also the ability to cache, uh, as I was saying, frameworks, uh, dsyms, and cartridge version files. If you don't know what a cartridge version file is, is something that they introduced recently, and basically it tells Cartage, hey, wait a second, I have already built this, I'm sure I have it, there is no reason why, even if I, even if there is, is a dependency that uses this version, I should rebuild the entire tree. So Cartage uh, gets a little bit uh, smarter with this, and these are also cached for your convenience, so that uh, if you have a dependency tree and you have most of the things in the cache, then Cartage would actually build just the one that you miss. Okay, so uh, Roam is also automation ready, which means that um, you can use it in your CI, and guess what? You can use it also uh, with Fastlane, with Fastlane, sorry. There's a plugin available, so you can integrate it into your uh, Fastlane uh, script. Um, are you alone? You don't need to share uh, frameworks, whatever. I think this is still useful, even for a one-man team. Um, as I said before, if you, given that you're using frameworks, uh, if you change a branch, right, uh, all you need to do at this point to retrieve a previous version of the framework is uh, pull the framework from the cache and sit back and enjoy, right? You have no rebuilds, no waiting times, you can be productive and take away uh, the pain from the uh, experience, right? So, um, I'm gonna try to give you a little demo about what I've been talking about. 
Okay. So uh, I launched Carthage at the beginning of the talk. Sorry. Uh, okay. At the beginning of the talk, and as you can see, it's still building, and it didn't even like reach anything significant in uh, uh, what I was trying to build. So I'm going to just interrupt it. Okay. All right. So I already have um, my caches um, set up. So I'm going to ask Rome um, to list to check. Okay, do I have everything in my caches? Right. So let's see. So it starts to think a little. I have a S3 cache and a local cache. So this is checking uh, both, and it's telling me, OK, so for iOS, you have everything here. It says iOS plus, 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 plus. So you have it, OK? So to know that I have something is not that useful uh, because of the workflow that you want to implement, uh, which I will be talking about more. So we can also. Uh, Ask it for the opposite, right? Is something missing? Yeah. Does the same thing, goes, thinks, and when it's done thinking, it says, no, nothing missing. You can go. All right. So now, let's say I have to fix a bug in a version that we have uh, out in production, right? So as you can see here, I'm on an unreleased version, right? And I'm going to check out a previous stack. OK, so now I am in uh, detached head. And uh, I'm going to show you that the card file that I have in this version is very different from the card file that I have uh, in my current head from where I just switched from. So I'm going to diff it. Release 1.8 dash swift 3. OK. And I want card file resolve. Okay, I'm missing a letter. Yeah. Okay, so this is the diff. As you can see, it is it is quite quite different. So um, at this point, what I would have to do, what I would have to do is I would have to run Cartridge Bootstrap, right? Again, to uh, or Cartridge Build to get uh, what I need and rebuild everything and wait. But what I can do instead is I can just ask, okay, do I have these things in the cache? So that's what I'm what I'm gonna do next. <coughs> Wrong list missing yeah. some thinking involved. Obviously um, if you just deal with uh, uh, Remote with local with a local folder, then the runtime is much uh, smaller. It doesn't take so long because here there's some networking going on. So I do have everything in my cache, right? So I can just ask it. Okay, so please give me everything that I'm missing, or please restore the cache at this point. Actually, so I can say roam download. Yes. So now it's restoring the caches at uh, the point where uh, I wanted it to be. And I can prove that this has happened by running a script that we wrote that will check, OK, is the version of the framework that you have actually matching the version that the card file, uh, the card file resolve is pointing to? So I'm going to run it.
All right, so I'm going to scroll up because maybe it's hard to see. So some of them are not there, uh, but these are not, uh, not important because they don't have a uh, version. But as you can see, the ones that, I'm, that I was interested in are all here. As it says, yes, they are at the correct cache, at the correct uh, version uh, from which the cache uh, was restored. Okay. So, ROM has uh, three commands. Basically, it has upload that you can use to upload a framework, or and yeah, you can use to upload a framework to the cache. It will also upload desyncs if there are desyncs. If there's not, if there, if you don't have desyncs, then it's just skipped. And uh, it will also, as I mentioned before, upload uh, cartridge version uh, uh, files if you have them. The second command that you can run with Roam is download. So to obviously retrieve things from the cache. And last but not least, the command that I ran the most, which was list. Okay. So here's a work phone, a workflow example of how to use this to be uh, more productive, right? And to reduce your build times. So what you would do is you would say, okay, Roam, download everything that I need, okay? So you launch Roam download. Okay? You will build only what you're missing, right? And, up, and upload what you have just built as well. So what you would do is you would say, okay, list, please list the things that are missing for my current build for platform iOS. This just extract the first parameter name, which is the name of the framework that is missing. Right? This is pipe to cartridge, so that cartridge would just build that one dependency. Yeah? And this is very powerful because in combination with uh, the version files that I mentioned before, it won't rebuild the entire uh, dependency tree, but just the particular framework that you're missing. Okay, so what do you need for all of this to work? There's uh, some stuff that I skipped, more or less. <laughs> so obviously you need the card file resolved, right? Otherwise you're not going very far, right? And you need a ROM file, which I'm working on uh, generating uh, automatically, by the way. And you're done. If you're using uh, S3 as your cache, then you obviously <coughs> also need credentials for S3. So you will need a config file that points uh, to the environment. Uh, so maybe east, US east, or uh, west, or wherever you're storing your, your data. And you need the credentials. And these can be either stored in config files, like any other tool that uses uh, uh, AWS, or they can be environment variables. Yeah, so I also mentioned uh, that you need a ROM file. What is a ROM file? This is how a ROM file looks. It's some information that you have to give Rome uh, to work. Okay, so this is a very uh, noisy ROM file because there's a lot of stuff, but a minimal ROM file just looks like this. That's all you need for this to work, okay? So let's dig a little bit into what are these things, what are these uh, keys inside this config file. So <clears throat> first, obviously, you have to tell Rome what your caches look like and where they are, right? So um, you would have to tell it, okay, I'm using a, a S3 bucket, and this is my name of the, uh, of the S3 bucket that I'm using, or I'm using a local cache, and this is the path to the local cache uh, that I'm using. You can use both, you can use one, but there must be at least one cache in the file for this to work, otherwise you're not caching anywhere. Okay, then in the wrong file, uh, that I showed you, there's also another section called repository map, right? In the minimal version, there's no repository map at all, okay? This is an optional section. So what is a uh, repository map? Basically, it maps from the names of the repositories to the names of the frameworks. Why is this necessary? Is this, this is necessary because not everybody stores stuff on GitHub and not everybody uh, um, adheres to the convention of naming their things with organization name slash framework name, right? So if you take these two lines, or 
example lines from a card file resolve. You can use it. you can see that here. This is for example pointing at Bitbucket. And this one is pointing to GitHub at uh, the Hog SDK. And there are two challenges with this. First of all, <laughs> in the first line, there's no organization framework framework name pattern, so you cannot know what artifacts this is producing. Right? And in the second line, uh, it's actually in the second line, the binary, the name of the framework that comes out of the build is not npm SDK iOS. It's actually OK SDK. Yeah? So you need to uh, help Rome a little bit to figure out, okay, what are the, what are the frameworks called that you want to upload? Okay. And also this is very useful, the repository map is very useful if you have uh, multiple targets in just one uh, project. So say you have uh, a Hockey uh, SDK iOS and that produce also another framework called Hockey SDK Common, for example, right, from the end. Uh, when you build with cartridge, it will build both. So this is why you need this, this mapping. Last but not least, uh, as I said during, uh, when I was explaining the features, uh, Rome also supports an ignore map, which means that you can blacklist some stuff and you can tell, and you can tell Rome, okay, whatever you see there, just forget about it. I don't want to cache it. I don't want to know anything about it. If it's missing, don't report it as missing, and so on and so forth. So, um, where am I going with this? So, next uh, uh, features that uh, I, uh, I think are going to be useful for people to uh, have in Rome are the auto-generation of the ROM file uh, as much as possible, because some of the mappings uh, can be extracted uh, automatically, especially in the, in the um, repository map. Add support for uh, Google Cloud Storage, not everybody uses this free, right? And the, add the possibility to upload the current framework, sort of like Cartridge Archive. And I'm open to any suggestions that uh, you guys might have. So I'm finished, and I'd like to thank you for, for the attention. And if you're interested, this is the link to uh, the repository. So thank you very much. Does it load? Yeah. So here it is. Questions, if any. Yeah, sure. Uh, um, two questions just about your uh, example, actually. Um, the point five minutes. Uh, sorry. Actually, just two questions about the example. So. Um, I was wondering, the 45 minute build time, uh, is that a uh, uh, debug build or an optimized build? So, the one, it's an optimized build. Okay. It's actually on release. So, it is an uh, old yeah, uh, archive. Okay. Um, and and <coughs> is, do you have a rough, it, or can you share a rough line of code count for that? For the total, for the total build? Um, well, I can share the build time for the framework that we use internally that has the most line of code that relies on several of them. Yeah? So that takes around 15 minutes. And roughly, um, you know the number of lines? Ah, the number of lines, sorry, <laughs> I forgot. So in total, in that framework is about maybe 10,000, okay. something like that. Do you, do you know uh, an app called Real Time Analyzer? It helped me very much to um, identify pieces of code which, after changing from one syntax to the other, they right. went down from from uh, one second to 100 milliseconds or so. Yes. So yes, I do know about uh, Real Time Analyzer, uh, and yes. 
uh, some of the syntax is not maybe the best for uh, the Swift compiler, but I don't think, uh, but in any case, um, the benefits of using caching outweigh whatever build time I would have if everything was optimized for the Swift compiler. Right? The benefits are, are clear even if everything was to make the Swift compiler happy. Uh, yeah, yes, of course. On that, but I wasn't surprised uh, to, hear, yeah. to hear about the yes. 45 minutes build time. Yes, so I, I have to point out that we don't sit 45 minutes doing nothing, yeah, <laughs> because otherwise my, I, would, I would be out of a job pretty quickly, right? So the entire team uh, uses the system and it takes uh, the amount of time that uh, the machine takes to generate the new framework, which is relative, right? You don't, need, you don't need it immediately. And then the amount of time that it takes to download the framework from a free to your machine. And once you've done it, it uses the local cache, so you can restore any tag at any point of any framework that you have downloaded previously immediately, and just press play, right? So there's almost no waiting once you, once you have it. Um, on the topic of making the Swift compiler happy, I am very opinionated. I don't think we should write the code the way the Swift compiler wants us to write the code, just because it cannot manage to crunch it that way. There are um, constructs that are much more expressive yeah, if you write them in ways that you want to write them or that are not made for the compiler itself, just to be happy with the compiler. The project that I'm working on isn't yet at this scale where this really matters, but at some point it will, and so I just want to thank you for moving around. So. Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, good. So if there aren't any more questions, we can jump to our next talk. Or and if you want to contribute, it's right there. But I have to say that you need to use. Uh, an unreleased version of Swift. And it's kind of Swift 12 or so. So we're there. All right. Thank you.